All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends and let us do the good work for today. Today, our topic is about gambling, and for sure, gambling is a very, very disgusting thing to do. Uh, and I say disgusting because it can destroy your future, your past, your family, and everything you have built in your life. And for sure, the Bible speaks about gambling. And the Bible goes so tough in the gambling that those who do uh, such a thing, maybe for some people it's not uh, like really, uh, they don't consider it as a sin. But the Bible make it clear that gambling is one of the reasons you don't go even to heaven. Because by gambling, you are hurting many people, including yourself. Uh, <clears throat> the question is, what the Quran speak about gambling? I always find the Quran trying to copy the Christian teaching <clears throat> and try to implement what is written in the Bible and claim in Muhammad he claim that this is something coming from his own but for sure as usual Muhammad he forbid gambling in one story and he encouraged gambling in other story if we go in the Quran <clears throat> We will find that the Quran say clearly that gambling is the, from the work of Shaitan. Gambling is from the work of Satan. And uh, by saying such a clear sentence obviously the gambling is not allowed in islam as it looked like because there is no way that the god of islam saying gambling is from satan and yet you try to say to us that gambling in islam is allowed that will not make sense right the fact gambling in islam is what islam is about While the Bible make it clear that gambling is forbidden and many other things are forbidden too, the Quran make it clear that gambling is the way to go to heaven. <clears throat> I will open my Skype soon, so if there is any Muslim would like to call us and get me busted. As you know, Muslims they claim that they can get me busted until now I did not hear such a thing first Corinthians 6 dare any of you having a matter against another go to law before the unjust and not before the Saints do ye not know that the Saints shall judge the world and if the world shall be judged by you are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters know ye not that we shall judge angels how much more things that pertain to this life? If then ye have judgments of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. I speak to your shame. Is it so that there is not a wise man among you? No, not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren? But brother goeth to law with brother, and that before the unbelievers? Now, therefore, there is utterly a fault among you, because ye go to law one with another. Why do ye not rather take wrong? Why do ye not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? Nay, ye do wrong and defraud, and that your brethren. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, 
nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. I mean, so here we see that this is made very clear in the Bible what it is right and what is wrong. Now, for sure, you know, uh, we commit sin and we don't make it as a lifestyle. Uh, we have our weakness, but it's not the reasoning to make it, uh, uh, to adjust our, our life, to make it fit with the weakness. Uh, some, they say, well, don't you think that this is extreme? Gambling bring a lot of problems to life of uh, family, society, and others. It's not going to stay only with yourself. Same time, gambling is somebody he is in love with money, and the Bible forbid us from to be in love with such a money because the whole point of this gambling. It's not you doing uh, some investment or work and effort. It's just you. You put some money in the table and waiting and guessing and hoping that you will be a winner. And usually, the only winner is the one who owns the casino and you are the fool. So what Islam speak about the gambling? <clears throat> Let me first open my Skype. So in case a Muslim, any Abdul, when I call us, he can call us. To give the Muslims opportunity to explain to us why Allah encouraged the Muslims to do gambling. Now, in order to make Muslims uh, get us busted, we have to give them something. I just said Allah encouraged gambling. So a Muslim now will call me and he will quote for me a verse from the Quran saying, Oh, let me show you. The Quran says you don't do gambling. Who is a Muslim when I do that? My Skype is open and I will be happy to receive a call from you if you are a Muslim Abdul who can tell me or challenge me to prove to him that Allah encouraged Muslims to do gambling. Do we have any Muslim? Any Muslim would like to call. I want to apologize from all those who send me messages in Skype saying hello, God bless you, CP, not to answer. Because trust me, if you see my Skype now, you will know what I'm talking about. It's endless. So I want to say thank you very much for the message you send me. And God bless you. And I appreciate your support. But forgive me if I don't answer you in Skype. <coughs> uh, all right. Let us see. A person from Nigeria, he want to discuss with me, he is a Muslim, and he want to prove to me that Allah and Yahweh is one. I mean, Allah and Yahweh is one, but we cannot find Yahweh in the Quran. <laughs> That's a good one. <clears throat> Allah and Yahweh is one, but Allah, he teach a very bad, filthy ethic. As you see, the Bible teaching that, you know, even small things can take us away from the, from the kingdom of God. When the Prophet of Islam even allowed the women to sleep around, as long as she don't have witnesses that she committed adultery, she is not an adulteress. And adultery in Islam is not adultery in the Bible, and theft in Islam is not the theft in, in the Bible, and the stealing in Islam is not the, the same as in the Bible. Everything the Muslim maybe they share same same words, but they don't have the same meaning. And not to forget that the God of Islam Himself is not a spirit, and our God is a spirit. So how we can have the same God? 
that is a very stupid naive statement from a naive person if we have the same God at least should have the same nature the God of Islam is a physical being who is not a spirit and he has no spirit so when a person he says such a statement for you laugh and say to him isn't it your God is not a spirit if he say yes my God is a spirit then him go and check in Google it will take you two seconds and you will find that you are a fool the heaven is not the same heaven in the heaven of Christians we don't have sex and porn in the heaven of Islam we have nothing but porn and sex and long penises so to have the same God we have to have the same heaven the same God same nature of God the God of the Christian is the Father the Son the Holy Spirit the God of the, the, the Muslims he is not even in the Old Testament God and his spirit above you know when he created the world in the first chapter of Genesis so the, the first uh, verses in the book of Genesis confirm that God is and he has a spirit while the whole Quran confirmed that Allah is just a physical being he have a leg he have a hand his he, he have two hands in the right shoulder and he don't have a spirit so we have totally two different God not only two different names so the city who says that we have one God is a very silly person he is a comedian but in the wrong stage now we go back to our topic <clears throat> Who is the Muslim wanna call me and explain to me how gambling work in Islam? All right. Anyone? I have a, a message from somebody claimed to be an ex Christian. Let us see. I'm trying to find some Abdul who want to call us. And until now, I see nothing. Too many texts in Skype. Okay. I don't know how I can read all those things here. It's endless. Uh, would take me a thousand years to read all the text. So I have to stop for now, hoping that we will have some Muslims are willing to call us and they can explain to us the Quran. Now, how the Quran teach us to do gambling? If we go to the book, the yellow pages of Allah, we will find the following. If you remember, after the debate between Mimi Hijab and David Wood, Mimi, he made a video quoting a verse from the Quran. And he was quoting specifically chapter 57, verse number 11. But 
the same story repeated not in only one chapter in the Quran chapter 2 verse number 245 let us see this one first you will see in this verse the God of Islam is asking the Muslims to make a bet on him gamble on him who is that will lend into Allah a goodly loan so that he may give it increase manifold what is gambling gambling is you give a, mo a money some money and you you wanted this money to double or be many 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 double and without any work without any effort you do you just you give the money you put the money in the table and then the money will will come back to you supposedly maybe 20 times more maybe 10 times maybe twice isn't it this is gambling the Quran speak about gambling and say it is from the act of shaitan but the same book confirmed that Allah is shaitan because when you say that your God is asking you to give him money and he will multiply the money for you by the way Muhammad he speak about money in heaven he said that in the heaven of Allah the the poorest person he will be ten times richer than any king in the earth ten times so this is a this is real money this is not metaphorical in chapter 2 verse number 219 it says they question thee about strong drink and games of chance say in both is a great sin okay so games of chance gambling is a great sin but isn't it this is nothing but a gambling why the god of islam he need me to give him money and he is telling me he will double my money many times how allah can double it And notice here all what you need is just to give the money so in one verse says in the same chapter that gambling is haram but in the same chapter it says you can gamble on Allah you can gamble on the God of Islam and here Allah is saying to you Allah will Double it for you many times. Who need, who need, money? God. How in the world, Allah, the God who created supposedly the universe, asking, begging for money, says, "Who wanna lend Allah alone? Who wanna give Allah alone?" No, you don't loan from Allah. You are loaning Allah. <laughs> and by the way, how this is can be called a loan? You see, loan is about something. Uh, <clears throat> uh, let us say, uh, it have to be paid back. But as you see here, this is not a loan will be paid back as it is. It is a loan will multiply many times, which means this is nothing but gambling. First of all, is not guaranteed. Second of all, we did not even see the one who is asking for the loan. The one who which I will pay him the money. Who is that? Muhammad. But Muhammad is claiming that this is what Allah told him. This is the money will goes for Allah. A Muslim saying to me, This is a this is a charity. What a charity? There is many verses in the Quran speaking about the charity. There's tons of verses in the Quran speaking about charity, and the charity in Islam is a joke. 
you attack the Christians you take their money Muhammad he took from the fifth of every attack is that a charity you force the Christians to pay jizya is that a charity even Muhammad he said you cannot even meet with me unless you pay me is that a charity what kind of a prophet he will not speak to you unless you pay him first is that really a charity what is a charity Muhammad even he asked women to give their vagina to him is that a charity Have you ever somebody heard of somebody cashing vagina? Take arms of their worth, wherewith thou mice purify them, sanctify them, and pray in their behalf. What kind of God he say if you pay him? I will make Muhammad pray in your behalf and that will make him set a saint of sanctify you is that a charity or this is a scam where is the charity in that statement of their goods take arms that so though might mightest purify and sanctify them and pray in their behalf so your god your prophet is like a pepsi cola machine you put some coins he starts saying please allah forgive uh, christian prince he just gave me uh, 10 dollars like i have now a gentleman he made a donation of 50 dollars so if i am muhammad i will say this Okay, you paid me fifty dollars. Now I will ask Allah, and Allah, because I am Muhammad, will 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 purify your sin. Since okay. when, if we give a charity that will purify our sin, and the Prophet of God will pray in our behalf, which means I don't even need to pray. Since when, if you pay me, I will pray in your behalf. So the gentleman who gave me fifty dollars now, he do not need to pray no more. I'm going to pray in your behalf. Don't go, go sleep, go sleep, my my friend. You just gave the money. I will pray in your behalf now. Is it obviously that this is a scam? The Muslims, the funny. If you look at the text, they are saying to me, "You are making up things up." It's in the front of you. You pay him, he pray in your behalf. You pay him, he sanctify you. You pray him, he purify you. No money, no honey. Guys, take it easy in the Muslims. It's okay. I mean, they are Muslims. Please, admin, don't ban them, even if they insult me. Please. Let the Muslims talk. It's enough. For them, the penalty of being a Muslim. No need to stress them, stress them more. This guy, one day he will go to heaven and he will have 70 euros orgasm. I mean, I can go and build a nuclear weapon and by the time I finish, he is not done even with orgasm. This is why the Americans are in the moon and the Muslims are dreaming about the 70 years orgasm. This is gambling. You gamble with your penis, you gamble with your God, you gamble with your religion, you gamble even with the size. Size doesn't matter in Islam. So we give Allah a loan and He promised us an endless penis. But can you prove to me that this is not a fake promise? Can you? Uh, uh, for people who send me a uh, text about this kid Nader Ahmed Nader Ahmed is mentally ill he is a kid he is a stupid so if you are a stupid send me text about him I blocked him yes because he's filthy he is rude and he is a kid this guy he made fun of David Wood 
for he have a children's in disability a person like this is not even allowed to be in my channel if you make fun of a child for he have a health issue you are a certified filthy creature so don't ever send me a text about such a creature otherwise I will block you and I will not be surprised if the one sending me the text he it is him Nader Ahmed himself because this guy he have an echo problem he want his name to be mentioned so don't be a donkey and don't send me anything about him and don't text me that's it I blocked you even if you are a Christian don't you know the who's this guy this guy is meant to have mental issue and you have to have mental issue to even to listen to him anyway we welcome all the Muslims to call us this guy you don't even know how to say his prophet name correctly and this is the same guy who agreed that his prophet have sex with the goat go and watch the debate <laughs> anyway so when the God of Islam anyone will text me about anything have nothing to do with my topic I will block you secondly if you have a question you text me in the chat my Skype only for the Muslims don't say to me hello don't say to me God bless you don't say nice to meet you I am NOT opening Skype for this you can say that in the chat you are just annoying my screen with the stupid text have nothing to do with my topic can't you say to me God bless you in the chat I mean do you have to say it in Skype Skype is only exists for a reason so Muslims can call me as simple as that who is that that will lend into Allah a goodly loan Who is a Muslim when I call us and tell us how we can lend Allah a goodly loan? Anyone? Anyone? No, I don't get angry from people calling me. You know that, but I don't want you know people. I've been. I don't know what's wrong with people. What is the purpose of Skype? If the purpose of of it is to communicate me, so why we have the chat uh, uh, active? You can text in the chat. And as long nothing really important for me, why you wanna tell me? Why you wanna text me? Don't text me, and don't tell me what to say. Call me, don't run away. Okay. We have a Muslim, he wanna... <coughs> Hello? Hello, CP? Yes, Hello, yes how are fine. you? Yes, thank you, I'm fine. You? I'm all right. Yes, so uh, CP, are, I wanna talk so about... you are you. Abdul from Pakistan. <laughs> yes, but no, I'm not Abdul. My name is not Abdul. So you are what? Are you a Muslim? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So what do you think about gambling here? Yes, the, this, this, this is about G G G. All right. Let me block your IP. Silly, stupid people. Imagine this kid once one day he will have a wife. Just imagine. Anyway, who is a Muslim is willing to give us a call and tell us what kind of God this God is. Muhammad he promised ten of his companions to go to heaven, and the number one companion to go to heaven, which he made him caliphate after him, is the one who gave him a lot of money. You see, when they have elections in many countries, including America, if you are a businessman and you donate to Donald Trump, if a Trump he won, he 
he will give you an offer to be an ambassador for him let us say in England or France or Japan what do you like to be that is a return for your donation he cannot pay you back money but he can give you a job which is you know very important you will be called ambassador of America with all the pleasure will come with it where you can be a person a diplomat you don't go through the airport with check you have bodyguards you have security you have you know you live like simply you are the king who present America as a king in different country Allah here he cannot do what a Trump can do Trump he can give you a job for sure what we have here is a promise of a God there's no guarantee that he is even exist or he is even talking so the money which we are giving right now is going to go to the pocket of who any Muslim any Muslim have an answer this money is going to go to who do Allah cash money what kind of God he is begging for money give Allah a loan and you will notice that this God he you know he continue repeating the same statement all over the Quran not only once not only twice chapter 57 verse number 11 who is that will lend into Allah a goodly loan that he may double it for him and his may be a rich reward we are talking about God you see charity charity is something and such a begging for money claiming that this is going for God is different story the Muslim they claim that Muhammad he was a very very poor man which is I find that very funny Muhammad he have 13 wives he have tons of slaves women and men and yet he don't have money poor guy can you afford to have 13 houses and 13 women and they have their each one of them she have many maids can you what is the budget I need to have in order to have 13 houses and 13 women and in every house I have made and slaves male and female and I have to feed them all and take care of them is that where the loan of Allah will go Will Tonisian call me and tell me where Muhammad he got his money to cover the cost of his family? Aisha, she received hundreds of thousands of pieces of gold as gifts. Muhammad he paid Abu Sufyan a hundred camel each for his, his family in order to convert to Islam. Where Muhammad is getting the money from if he is poor? Hundred camel for each. And gold and silver where the money is coming from and how in the world you pay somebody to convert to Islam unless you are a scam yourself imagine Jesus paying someone to say I believe in you You keep saying not a true sir, but you cannot prove it wrong. Call me. Not a true sir. Not a true sir. Not a true sir. Not a true sir. <laughs> it's like you are a copy paste machine. And all what you have is not a true sir. Do you have something else? Or this is the only thing you can repeat?
Ben yani Muslim. A person who is poor, he will not be able to purchase slaves and to feed the slaves. Any Muslim can explain to us what's going on. Anyone? So gambling in Islam is everything. Islam is based on gambling. You are given your money, guessing that you have a God who is going to tempt you by doubling the money back to you. And here we ask a very funny question. How in the world Allah will pay you by making your money double? Is that something you will receive in the heaven? Any Muslim? Any Muslim want to say something? Let me see see if I can find you the hadith about the you will be richer than ten kings in the heaven of Allah. Here we go. <clears throat> we better read it from Sahih Muslim, so the Muslim will not say this is and this is Sahih, so they cannot say as you see, you know, repeated many places and it's an accurate thing. So look, uh, look what, what Muhammad, he claim and he teach his followers, trying to fool them with money, tempt them with money, making them gamble on him, gamble with their life, with their money, with their goods, with their children. And again, Muslims cannot say this is not Sahih as you see while he was in the member member which means like the stage where people speak I heard etc al Mughaira saying that attribute of Allah blah 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 indeed Musa's asked the Lord O Lord who is the lowest in the rank among the people of paradise in the paradise of Islam people are not equal there's ranks. Yes, there's noble, there's middle class, there's poor, even in heaven. He said, a man who comes after the people of paradise have been admitted to paradise. A guy, he, he, he took the last bus. And he is told to enter it. He says, how I can enter it, or I enter, when they have gotten all their uh, uh, beads, they got everything, all the gifts, and all that is to be had, uh, nothing left for me now, what I will go and do, uh, do in. He said so, it said to him, would you accept if you were to have what a king in the world, do you like to be rich like a king in this world? The guy he says, sure, yeah, absolutely. He say, yes, yes, Lord. I accept. So it said to him, then this is and it is like, and it is like again, and it is like again. So he says, I accept, Lord, I accept, Lord. And he said to him, then this is for you as ten like this, therefore.
Do you see it, Muslims? Is it this is a gambling? What kind of God he is promising me to be ten times more rich than any king in the earth? What I would do with money in heaven? And what the point of being ten times rich than a king? I will buy a Lamborghini there. I will have thin Ferrari. What kind of God he is seducing us and tempting us by the money so we can believe in him? I will be ten times more rich than any king in the earth. And here you notice how Muhammad, the fallacy of Muhammad, how he tried to fool people by saying to them, even Allah, he is discussing with you. Hmm. Imagine this, you are in the door of the heaven and Allah sitting in the front of the table and he said, he said to him, Allah said to him, enter, enter. The guy, he said, enter to do what? People, they enter before me and they took everything because Muslims are people who they don't leave anything in the ground. They will <laughs> swallow it all. So the guy is saying, I'm, I'm late. So Allah, he said to him, would you accept if you were to have what a king in this world? Look at the negoti negotiation now. This is like a, like a, a timeshare uh, dealer in Las Vegas. They try to scam people. They say to you, I want to sell you you can stay in this hotel for two weeks a year and blah 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 do you like to have stay in the most fancy hotel two weeks a year and then they suck your blood for the rest of the year is it this is a gambling so now we give Allah alone and then the loan, if we give him money, Allah will return it to us and he will make us ten times more rich than any king of the kings of this earth. What Muslims have to say. And not only that, the deception goes far and says here, indeed, you shall have this and whatever your soul desire and whatever delight your eyes here muhammad he made a big poo, -poo. anyone understand why he made a big poo, poo anyone knows Big, huge people. How Muhammad he claimed that the heaven of Allah have ranks, and everyone who go to a rank which fit with his deeds, and then you say to the lowest man, whatever you wish. <laughs> okay, I wish the highest rank. <laughs> I mean, this is the most stupid statement from a prophet making poo poo, not doing teaching. If we go and we look in different hadith, let me find you the hadith. Muhammad, he said the following. Let us see. Read carefully with me, my friend. In paradise, there are a hundred level. <clears throat> what is between every two level is the like what is between the heaven and the earth. Al Fardos is the highest floor. So Fardos, the word Fardos, is a name for the highest floor in the level, which means floor number 100. Are made to flow forth 
so when you ask Allah asking for for those so if you want to ask us for for those my friend don't ask for the first floor or basement <laughs> I mean <laughs> but look is it this is a total contradiction with this statement if Allah he promised me whatever I wish That's mean everybody will be in the for those and nobody will be in the first and the second and third and ten and twenty and thirty and fifty and eighty and ninety floor. Are we following people? Are you with me, Muslims? So how this can be from God? You are gambling with your belief. With what you call deeds investment giving Allah alone to receive this but obviously this is can't be true Muhammad is schooling us about going to heaven but he himself is not sure even if he will go to heaven or not Read carefully with me. None amongst you would attain salvation poorly because of his deeds. Hold on, hold on. None of you will attain salvation because of his deeds. So, what do you mean about giving him give give money to the prophet so he will purify you? you guys, you remember? Isn't it you who said take good? Take of their goods and take arms, isn't this a deed? So you purify them and sanctify them. Is it you who says the one who gave Allah alone, he will go and Allah will double it for him, and you know, and he will take him to heaven and he will make him ten times more rich than a king? And then you say to us that your deed will do nothing. Hello, your deed have nothing to do with going to heaven. Read carefully. None amongst you would attain salvation purely, purely because of his deed. A person said, Allah Messenger, even you thereupon he said, yes, and not even I, except that Allah warps me in mercy. Even Muhammad is not sure he will go to heaven. Do you see it? So all the deeds Muhammad he was fabricating in the Quran and in many other hadith about giving him money, giving him your 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 wealth, giving him your farm, giving him your, your your children to go and fight for him. This is all deeds of life, but deeds will not take you to heaven. So what is going to take you to heaven? That's mean all the promises we saw in the Quran is nothing but fiction. Right? Also funny, if a person die, a Muslim or atheist or a Jewish, Mr. Prince, according to you, let me show you this text here. Hold on. As long as the Muslims are not calling me, we have to show you their comment. Also funny, if a person die, uh, a Muslim or an atheist or a Jewish, Mr. Prince, according to you, isn't it the same thing if you do, uh, I don't know, Joe, uh, one of them believe, I, mean, I think you don't, you mean don't, one of them believe and accept Jesus, uh, uh, Son of God? Uh, my friend, believing in Jesus have nothing to do with giving money. We are talking about religion, Focusing in giving money so you might go to heaven. Jesus is not asking you for your money, and he never said, If you give me money, I will take you to heaven. We have a God who says, You have to pay him, you have to lend him, you have to spend your money on him, and by doing that, he sanctify you and he purify you. If you give him a mortgage, Allah will forgive your sin. 
believing in Jesus have nothing to do with, with money you see the, the 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 simple thing to speak about gambling is about to to have money involved money there's nowhere in Christianity it says if you give money you are saved nowhere the God of his time he have tons of verses speaking about giving him money so you can forgive your sin read carefully with me if you lend into Allah a goodly loan he will double it for you and will forgive you chapter 64 verse number 17 isn't it clear that by giving Allah money your sin is forgiven or I'm making things up now you show me where Jesus says give me money I forgive your sin when we speak about gambling we are talking about money I give you money in return I forgive you I give me money in return I send you to heaven Don't you see it? I don't say things without proof. Oh, what you are saying here, give Muhammad some money and Muhammad, he will forgive your sin. Who is going to receive the money? Allah? No, Allah. We never saw him. We never heard of him. I mean, even Muhammad, he never has heard, heard the fart of Allah. So who, where is Allah? Who is going to get the money? Muhammad. And Muhammad, if he is a decent prophet, he should not say, if you give Allah money, he forgive your sin. Because simply, this is nothing but a scam. And to believe in such a thing, you have to be a fool. Be careful in the text. Anyone attack the Catholic, I will ban you from my channel. I don't like stupidity in my channel. Catholic are Christians. And there's many people, they practice a scam from all the churches. They are the same as Muhammad. So don't go there. There's many like Muhammad. Jesus said many, they will come to you in a clothes of sheep, but they are wolves. So they collect donations from people. They ask them to call, you know, you open some, they call them Christian TV, the same as Muhammad. They are Muhammadan, actually. They are Muhammadan, but they claim that they are Christians. Call right now. Call right now and receive the blessing of God. Call now and make a donation. I mean, this is a scam, obviously. That is Islam, as you see in front of you. So those scammers can be exist in many churches this is not about catholic or protestant or there is many men who worship money and they try to fool the naive you to pay him if you make a donation for me and i say to you oh, if you donate to me god will forgive your sin that's mean obviously i'm making a scam and you are the fool and this is exist everywhere in the world. Muhammad is not the only person who practices scam. There's many they claim to be priests, bishops. They are a scammer like Muhammad. Now, do we have any Muslim here would like to call us? Don't ask me, guys, about what do you think about Shabbat. What do you think? Who care? Ask him. Go ask him what do you think. You, you say what you think. Focus with me in my topic, please. You, see, you know, we are sometimes like Muslims. A Muslim, they ask, uh, they call the sheikh. Brother, what do you think about no man Khan? A brother, a no man Khan, a brother, he is a very decent Muslim. And even he take off his shirt in the front of the camera because he like to see the abs in his uh, belly bum. I mean, what is my business with this? Come on. We are teaching here about the cult of Islam, not about this guy and that guy. Focus with me. Do we have any Muslim here would like to tell us something good about Islam?
Yeah, I am willing to ban anyone is taking our topic out of the topic. You don't like it, you can leave. This is not a place for a bunch of kids. They want to gossip and talk about this guy and that guy. Here we have a real education. You don't like it, close the door and take the first bus in your way. Any Muslim, why so angry? Because I am jealous from my God, my friend, and you are not. And obviously you don't care. You think this is a place here for uh, for a chit chat. Take hike. I just don't ban you for asking me why you are angry. To prove to you that I am not angry, I just ban you. Because you are taking me out of my topic. Bye-bye. Take a hike. Do we have any Muslim here would like to call us? Uh, Ramble, I told you, don't ask me about Walid Shabbat or anyone. I don't know what are you talking about and not, not of my interest. My topic is Islam. You ask me about things have nothing to do with my topic, I will ban you. That means you are a child and you are not mature. If our class is about mathematics, don't ask me about biology. And I am not here to speak about this guy or that guy. I am here to speak about a cult. It's called Islam. Do we have any Muslim have something to say? Why you need to give Allah money in order to forgive you by paying him? Well, obviously, Muhammad is a businessman because Allah is not the one who will get the money. It's Muhammad to go to his pocket. And now Muhammad he is telling them clearly that if you pay me, I forgive your sin. This is a gambling 100% because now you are paying money, putting it in the table, hoping that this will double it for you many times and he will forgive your sin. So we showed you verses where it says Allah will double the money many times and we show you the verses now where it says that he will forgive your sin too. And this is nothing but gambling. Any Muslim can prove me wrong. Because we own Allah everything. What we own Allah everything? That's that's funny of you. So if you own Allah everything, why Allah he need even your money? You have it. <laughs> good one, good one. The one who created the heaven and the earth cannot he send like one thousand kilogram of gold to Muhammad? You know, you're a prophet of Allah. Ask him. Thank you. The funny here, it is Allah is begging for money. It's not even Muhammad supposed to. Is that correct? You see, you Muslims, you are praying to Allah five times a day. And look what happened two days ago. Millions of cockroaches and, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, locusts, they attacked the Kaaba and Mecca. And the funny, the Muslims always they have their own logic. They say, oh, because Saudi Arabia today are not following Islam. But this has happened every year since centuries, since Muhammad time. And if Allah is going to punish you for doing bad by attacking his house, that means your God, Allah, is a stupid. If the crown prince, he is doing something wrong, and this is why Allah is angry, then he should send the cockroaches to the house of the prince, not to the house of Allah. But you are talking to who? You are talking to a literate nation. 
Imagine I am the one who made Allah angry, but yet Allah He sent the cockroaches to Mecca. How weird is that? Hey, hey, Allah, Christian Prince is here. He don't live in Mecca. Send the cockroaches here. I never saw a cockroach in my house. You Muslims are being silly. Your God get upset from you, so he attack his house? Isn't it the Quran in the chapter of the elephant? Allah says that Allah, he sent an army of birds to defend the Kaaba. Well, send the birds to eat the cockroaches. Can't you? And instead of giving me a speech about protecting the Kaaba by sending birds, where is the same birds? In chapter 105, at the end of the Quran, it says there is a chapter is called the chapter of the elephant, which I find it one of the most funny, stupid chapters in the Quran. Who in the world want to believe in such a garbage? That there's an army of elephants came to destroy the Kaaba, and Allah He sent F-16 birds, and they are carrying rocks, and not only that, they aim. The aim and the brog fail in the top of the head of the elephant. Bingo. Why you are buying the awax? Why you are buying etc.? Hmm? Here we go. You have the flying birds of Allah. What about we see the birds coming to save the Kaaba from the cockroaches and from the locust and from the uh, uh, what they call them? Crickets, they call them crickets. Maybe Allah he need a loan, so he can buy DDT or a spray to spray the cockroaches. Now we got it. I was wondering why Allah he need the money. Now we know it. Allah he want to buy some spray to fight the cockroaches around the Kaaba. That makes sense. The locust, uh, locust, am I saying correctly? No problem. If I don't say it correctly, you know, I am an Arab. Hello? Do you think Allah here is just trying to buy some equipment to fight the infection of the Kaaba? Anyone? Hello? As you see, Islam is based on all, all of it is based in gambling. When Muhammad he said in the hadith that there is no guarantee for you to go to heaven and it's gambling even him he is not sure actually Muhammad he said in different hadith something is more funny and more crazy uh, look what Muhammad he said According to Muslims and according to Muhammad, Allah He wrote for you your destiny. Allah wrote for you know wrote for you your destiny. So you are spending your life doing the act of people who go to heaven, as you see with me in the screen. Read with me carefully. A man he will do the act of people of heaven until he is in a distance of one cubit or nearer to heaven then what Allah wrote for him is going to change his destiny read and love and by Allah 
Muhammad is swearing now by Allah when Muhammad he swear that's mean big poopo -poo is coming by Allah a person among you may do the deeds of people of fire till there is only a cubit or an arm breathe distance between him and fire so what happened now you are doing the act of fire people fire what does that mean you don't pray to Allah you don't do jihad you don't hate the Christians you don't rape women you don't kidnap you don't join ISIS that's bad that's mean you are a bad Muslim and then but then that is written by Allah the order of the angels he gave to the angels when he created you proceed and he does the deeds of the people of paradise and he enter it so this is gambling because it doesn't matter what you do it's what Allah wrote for you so giving a loan you don't give a loan you pray you don't pray you convert you don't convert it's a stupid religion it's what Allah he wrote for you when he created you is going to happen do you see it is it this is a pure gambling So why you want to give your money to Allah if that will not help anyway? What is written by Allah is going to change. And look what Muhammad, he proved my point by continue saying the following. Read carefully with me. Muhammad, he said, not me. Because now the Muslim, they say, oh, you are making things up. Muhammad, he said, and this is Sahih al-Bukhari, as you see, Abdul, not my statement. And this is Sahih. All right. Muhammad continues saying, and a man may do the deeds of people of paradise till they're only a cubit or two between him and paradise. And then that is written, proceed. And he does the deed of the fire and he enter fire. Look at this poor Abdul. A brother Zach and Naik, he is going to convert people to Islam around the earth all his life. If we ask Zach and Naik what he think about this, he will say the following. Brother Hitler, according to the hadith, if you go to the hadith of Ta'il Bukhari, hadith number 594, it said that a person, he might do the deed of hellfire. Or a person, he might do the deed of heaven. All his life until there is a distance between him and hellfire or heaven, a distance of a cubit. Do you know what the cubit mean? Like, yeah, like like the side of my mouth, or, sorry, my nose. So he is almost in the door of the heaven or almost in the door of the hellfire. And then what is written by Allah is going to take over. Hey, brother, are you saying to me that all your life was garbage for nothing? You are doing da'wah, trying to convert people to Islam. At the end of the day, it's what Allah he wrote for you is going to happen, right? Absolutely, brother. Absolutely. It doesn't matter what I did. It's what Allah he wrote for me already. So we pray for Allah that Allah he wrote for us to go to heaven. Thank you. That is a heaven. It's a gambling. You convert, you don't convert, you do good deed, you do bad deed. Who care? Do you see it, Muslims? Do you see it, Muslims? This is this is a religion? Las Vegas is better. Las Vegas, at least, if you play card, you have a chance of 4 to 52, right? How, how many cards they card? 52? You don't have a chance at all. This is gambling, pure gambling. There's no chance at all because here you don't know even what's happening. It's what Allah he wrote for you already. It's not what you do. It's not how smart you are. It's how, how you play. It doesn't matter what you play. What matter is how Allah play. In this game of gambling in Islam, the only one he play is Allah.
Tanya Abdul. Rose Abdul. As you see, not a single Muslim dare to prove me wrong that this is nothing but a pure gambling. There is no salvation in Islam. There is no guarantee. And there is no point of doing even bad deed or good deeds. Because it doesn't matter. You do bad deed, you do good day. deed. is not really what that will make you go to heaven. It's what Allah he wrote for you. How stupid this, this cult is. How stupid such a cult is. And all what we see the Muslims saying in the chat, you are taught 100% wrong, but they cannot say to us how we are wrong. <laughs> hmm? How we are wrong. I'm showing you what your prophet said. Are you saying your prophet wrong? It's not me who's saying that. It's your prophet. Your prophet saying, it's a game only Allah play in this game. It's not you. Allah, he made a gambling. He put your name in his roulette. And if your name come in the, because Allah, he hit the black color, as you know, if your name come in the black, you go to hell. If your name come in the white, you go to heaven. What do you say? If this is religion, what is the stupidity? I mean, at least bring us something can be considered as you know. You see, Jehovah's Witnesses are stupid, but they don't go that far with their stupidity. I mean, this is way far beyond the stupidity. Any Abdul? Any halal Abdul? By the way, it's halal to call me. Skype is halal because in Skype they don't use pork. I mean, look at this religion. They allow prostitution, they allowed temporary marriage, they allowed gambling to, to spend your money on Allah, and maybe you will win and maybe you will lose because it doesn't matter whether you give him money or not, still he's written for you your destiny. They allow child molestation, they allowed a child child rape. But then they don't eat pork, my friend. They are good people. We don't eat pork. When I was, you know, uh, after I finished my, uh, uh, like, you know, I was, I was with the army, and I, there is a Abdul. He he, he worked there. He is a civilian. Because I'm Middle Eastern, he go with me to eat. Almost for six months. Every day we go to the like there is a restaurant close, so we go there. The Abdul he asked the waiter or waitress, say, Do you have halal pork? The waiter or waitress they laugh, they said, Sure, and they show him the menu, and then he chose his dish. After like six months, he said to me, What are you eating? But this time I said to him, When he asked me, I said, uh, what, what is that meat? I said, This is in Arabic, khanzir. He said, What you eat, khanzir? So, what? What? He said to me, "You eat khanzir." I said, "Yeah, I eat khanzir," which means pork. He said, "Auzu billah." I said, "You eat it? Are you joking or what?" He said, "No." How you eat khanzir? I said, "You eat it. You are eating khanzir for the last six months." He said, "Me?" I said, "Yeah." He said, "When?" He said, "No, you are eating khanzir right now, right now." Aren't you the one who keep coming here saying, "Do you have halal pork?" He said, "Yeah." So don't you know that pork is khanzir, you idiot? He said, what? <laughs> so the guy, he thought that this is like a, a name of a dish or something, you know, halal pork. He's an idiot. He do not know. He, he doesn't speak good English. So 
he come to the restaurant he asked if they have halal pork and the people they show him what pork they have and he is eating for the six month last six month halal pork and I thought he's joking and I thought you know like this is what I thought I mean he's being uh, he's joking he's not he don't care for Islam you know I never thought that he is an idiot he do not know what he's eating and then he said to me how you eat khanzir you are eating khanzir even now look at your dish the dish in the front of you I said this is khanzir he said yeah and then after that since that uh, time uh, I said to him by the way your face has changed you look like khanzir <laughs> by the way brother your lips looked like weird you know since you start eating khanzir for six months Look at you, your lips is a change, your, your nose, even your nose look different now. I mean, what an idiot. So they do all the crazy stuff in the world, yet they claim that they are good because they don't eat khanzir. Look what the Lord, he said. It's not what go in your mouth, make you dirty, but what come from your mouth. That is wisdom. A Muslim woman, she cannot walk alone in the street in Saudi Arabia. But yet nobody there is eating khanzir. So why the woman, she is not safe to walk alone? Obviously, not eating khanzir did not make you have a good society. In the Middle East, you cannot find a house without bars in the windows. Why? Because if you leave your house without bars for five minutes, they will break in and they will steal all your money and all your furniture. But they don't eat khanzir, brother. Those are good religious thieves. So the Muslim, they school us about ethic and what is right and what's wrong. But if you go and live in their countries, nothing right there. Even the grocery store is, store is a scam. So based on the hadith in the front of us, if you eat khanzir all your life, it doesn't matter because what Allah he wrote for you, like you are eating khanzir all your life, breaking the command of Allah. Huh? And then almost you are in the door of hell, that then what Allah he wrote for you proceed and you go to heaven. Anyone? Mayday, Mayday. Any Muslim? Yeah, for sure it's haram to call me, for sure, haram. They knew they cannot. Yeah, but it's not haram to try to fool a girl. She is 17 years old to convert to Islam. But haram to talk to Christian prince. Mm. It's not even haram to sleep with the women. She go to the bar, even if she eat pork. It's halal. When they arrested a Saudi prince, and they said to him, is it haram in Islam to sell drugs? He said, yes, but uh, you don't sell to Muslims. <laughs> By the way, the, the biggest producers of drugs in the world are the fanatic Muslims, not even just normal Muslims. Taliban, Pakistan, Hezbollah, you name it. Actually, more than 90% of the fund of Hezbollah is coming from drugs. And 100% of the fund of Taliban is coming from drugs. But they don't eat pork. 
when we find that in Google number one country who searched for sex with donkey is Pakistan and then we find that the government of Pakistan sending a legal complaint against Christian Prince to YouTube have you I mean can you believe it a government of a country like Pakistan complaining against and making a legal claim legally claim against Christian Prince I mean who is this guy Christian Prince you are a country or Pakistan I am a threat to the security and the stability of Pakistan the drugs my friend is all over in the country the terrorism the weapon in the street the terrorist but Christian Prince is the problem what is the claim I receive emails from uh, from YouTube they have a long list of videos made by me saying we receive a complaint from government and I was reading to see first because in the beginning it doesn't say which government I was reading to see which what is that I mean what government you know in the beginning I was like what USA government what is that and then I start reading and going down going down going down and then it says the government of Pakistan I'm thinking guys to go vacation to Pakistan who wanna go fund me to go to Pakistan and pay for my funeral there <laughs> you can imagine how many beloved Pakistani Muslims will be waiting for me in the airport unbelievable I can I can guess maybe 10 million 20 million yeah but somebody have to pay for the funeral the Muslim they will not pay for it it's haram I mean after they cut me pieces somebody have to come on the Abdul will be lined up in the airport to give me a hug this is how weak this cult is they need the protection of government this religion their God cannot do it what about God? He do something to stop me. I'm doing this for right a long time ago, more than a half of my life. What about Allah? Do something, kill a Christian prince. Not now. I mean, you, you are late now. If you kill me now, Allah, don't do it now. Just wait until I finish that. Please, Allah. Please finish. What about Allah? He gave me a heart attack right now as we speak. What do you say, Muslims? Because that will be a miracle of Allah if something happened to me right now as we speak. Can your God Allah, the God of the shish kebab, shut me up? Hello? Guys, I have my heart. My heart. Yeah. I actually, no, I just uh, saw a beautiful woman walking from front of the window, and my heart started beating for her, the same as Muhammad. My heart flipped for you. And she's married, by the way, like the prophet when he said to Zainab, she is married. Hey, Zainab, my heart, praise be to Allah, the one who flipped my heart for you. I mean, your God, Allah, he can make a flip, the heart of Muhammad a flip for a married woman, but he cannot make my heart a flip to stop me from exposing him. Zainab, Zainab, where are you? Everybody waiting for you. Everybody feeling in love because you are so big and good for barbecue. Zainab, Zainab, where are you? The Prophet Muhammad crazy about you. He was a crazy to the point. Allah, he sent a message about you and he said, don't worry about it. She is going to be just for you. Zainab, Zainab, where are you? That's amazing. God for you. And what make it more funny, that Zainab, she claimed that each time her husband, he tried to have sex with her, Allah, he bite his penis. Ouch. I'm so glad I am not the husband of Zainab. Have you ever heard of such a miracle? The poor husband, because Muhammad now he flirted with the wife. 
just because Muhammad he flirted with the wife Muhammad he like her the husband now he want to sleep with the women as a husband his wife it's his lawful it's, it's halal it's halal no it's not halal no more because the second the prophet he wished to have her your penis cannot touch her so according to Zainab since the prophet he had said what he said that he like her and he is he have a lust for her each time her husband try to have sex with her Allah he make his penis swell And you are saying to me, Muhammad has no miracles. Even his miracles involve the penises of other men. Muhammad, you like your wife? Your penis goes swell. Go balloon. Oh, don't touch it. Don't touch it. It's hurt. I told you. I told the brother. I told you if the prophet, he like your wife, your penis will go balloon. And the funny, this is written in their books, written by them reported by them printed by them given to us by them and then the muslim they say to you, you are a liar who is the muslim when i call me right now and i will show you the reference any muslim who is a muslim when i call me and challenge me <clears throat> Wait on there. Yeah, we show it many times. As you see, this is very stupid cult, and in order to believe in it, you have to be a stupid fool. Any beautiful Muslim would like to call us? Any handsome Muslim. Now, by now, you learn why I say beautiful Muslim and handsome Muslim, correct? Who remember why? Let us see if you guys are learning. Why I say beautiful Muslim and handsome Muslim. Why I always say that. I'm not insulting, by the way. Because according, according to Muhammad, a Muslim man, he can shave, he can take hair from his face. But a Muslim woman, she cannot. So who is the handsome here with the beard? Have you ever heard of religion like this? Women, if she take hair from her face, Allah will curse her. But if a man, he do the same, Allah will not curse him. What kind of religion is religion? Are you saying that you Muslims you like women to be having a mustache and beard? And by the way, the only way to find out if a Muslim woman she is religious or not is the hair in her face. If she have the skin like she she work in high eyebrows in her mustache in her beard, that means she is a false Muslim. She is not practicing what Muhammad he said. Especially if she is a coming from an ethnic which is hairy like us. We are Arab. We are hairy. You know, once I went to the swimming pool, they kicked me out. They thought I'm wearing my clothes. They said, sir, you cannot swim with this. your clothes. I said, I am not wearing anything. This is my hair. And this is what the, the atheist, uh, they use against me in the debate. They said to me, we heard you once saying that you have a lot of hair. Okay, this is a proof that the atheism is true. Monkeys and uh, hair. Makes sense. And I lost the debate because of that. What I can do? I mean, this is a mistake I should not say, but it's too late now. It's recorded. So a poor Muslim woman, she cannot take hair from her face. Why? Allah will be upset. Why? Because, brother, if you take hair, you are changing the way Allah he made you so why the prophet he used to do sugar and he take hair from his body why Muhammad wives they have and guys look at this hadith 
Why in the word the wife of the prophet? She is reporting to us that the prophet he used to use sugar wax to clean the hair around his penis. Please see in. Yes. Uh, uh, we have uh, this time not fake news. We have real news. Do you like to publish it? Sorry, we publish only fake news. But this is real news. It's proven by Ummu Salama, the wife of the Prophet himself. The Prophet now, as we speak, he 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 cover his gentile area with wax, and he is removing hair. Are you sure from that? Absolutely. Do you have witnesses? The wife of the prophet, and she is there right now. She is holding it for him. She is holding what exactly? I mean the dish, the dish which have walks in it, not the you know. So why Muhammad he can remove hair, but the women she cannot remove hair? Why the man he can do circumcision? The women she can do circumcision, which means changing the way Allah He made you. If the point is you cannot change the way Allah He made you, Muhammad He color his hair, he wanna be redneck. Muhammad He cut penis. Muhammad ordered circumcision for women. Muhammad He shaved the hair from his body, not only for his pubic area, all the area, all the body. But Allah will be upset just from a woman removing hair. Read carefully. The prophet S A W caused the women, cursed the women who practice tattooing. And those who seek to be tattooed, and the women who remove hair from their faces, seeking beautification. How disgusting! How disgusting! And this is why until now I am not married. I signed a dating website, it's called hairywomen.com, hoping to find a woman fit with my religious belief. Hairywomen.com is halal dating website where all women are very hairy, organic. You meet a girl, she is hairy. And you are the first time seeing her, and you say to her, I am in love with your beard. She say, oh, sorry, I'm shy now. Truly, truly, your beard and your eyebrows, they are thick like mustache, mashallah. And look at your mustache, they are even thicker than mine. Alhamdulillah. And now we became two men in the house. This is a religion. This is really a religion. What do you think, guys, about the website hairywomen.com? <laughs> I'm sure some of the Muslims now they are looking for it. Uh, trust me, not, not even one Muslim he want to marry a woman, she is hairy. Hypocrites. I never saw a woman in the Middle East. I don't remember a woman she have not taken hair from her face. You know, Middle Eastern, we are Middle Eastern people, we are hairy. So not only men are hairy, men and women. So if a woman by the age of 20, 25, she did not take hair from her body, she will look literally like a man. Like maybe, uh, uh, you know, a, a blonde, white people, they have, uh, they have a lot less the hair in their body, and maybe even they don't even have hair. But this is not the case for us. And by the way, it keep me warm. Like now it's minus eight outside. And even if my heater is off, 
uh, this is they call the evolution by the way the atheists they say that you have too much hair because it keep because this is the evolution well the Middle East is hot we do not need hair but people who live in Europe they don't have hair hello based on this European people they do, should look like a bear and we should not have hair at all because in our countries we are coming from it's very hot but it's the opposite let it go let it go I mean you are too much Hmm. Any Muslim have any comment? So if a Muslim woman she do remove hair, she is gambling with her salvation now. See, I, I feel sorry for you. You lost salvation. Just because you remove hair from your face. Seeking beautification. You should not seek beautification, you should see ugliness. About share? What I don't know what I understand the client. I don't know what you mean. Do we have any Muslim here? So Muhammad, he shaved hair from his body, all his body. Muhammad, he clipped and he cut his hair. Muhammad, he colored his hair red. Muhammad, uh, uh, he put eyeliner three times a day. I ask many times Muslims, why the prophet, he put eyeliner? He said he want to be pretty. Well, I am so glad that you have a pretty prophet. There's a video on YouTube. It's called the description of the prophet of Allah. You will die laughing when the Muslim describe how pretty he is. A guy, he came and he saw the messenger of Allah come in. And the moon was in the middle of the sky. And the moon was so bright and shiny. And look at the face of the prophet. And you look at the moon. And you look at the face of the prophet, and you look at the moon, and you look at the face of the prophet, and you look at the moon, and you look at the face of the prophet, and you look at the moon. And come, come, come tomorrow because we have to continue. And you look at the face of the prophet, and you look at the moon, and you should see, guys, the voice effect and the music in the background. Like people, they are dying from the affection. I mean, this is a very holy moment. The face of the prophet is brighter and whiter than the moon. I wish I can play the video for you here so you would die laughing. But you know, if you play it, they will blame, they will they will make a copyright claim. I look at the prophet and I look at the moon. I look at the prophet and I look at the moon. I look at the prophet. I, like we got it, man. I mean, how many times you have to repeat it? Okay, you look at the prophet and you look at the moon and conclusion, please. No, 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 we have to we have to make action. I look at the prophet, I look at the moon, and I look at the prophet, and I look at the moon. I look at the prophet. I look again at the moon, and then I look at the prophet, and I look at the moon. A brother, are you sure you are looking, not touching? <laughs> oh boy. Uh, Yes. Alhamdulillah. 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 I'm a Muslim. I'm a Muslim. Do we have any Abdul? Sahar, Sahar. Somebody asking me to talk about Sahar. My friend, stay here now. We don't want to change the topic. We're talking about gambling. Any Abdul? Actually, I'm not going to stay long today. I have uh, I have some water in my ear. Actually, both of them. And, uh, you know... Mm, I don't feel comfortable with my ears having the headset over my uh, ears. Uh, I, I took a shower, which is unusual for Arab, by the way. We Arab, we take a shower like once a while. I, I forgot when last time I took a shower. 
and uh, because I'm not used for a shower so now I have some like in the shower some water get in my ears uh, and uh, I have to go and pray for Allah to dry my uh, ears otherwise I will end to be deaf like Allah look the Muslims are praying to destroy Israel for the last 70 years Allah here hear nothing destroy America Allah he hear nothing They pray before they attack Israel, they lose. Allah, he do nothing. So either Allah, he don't have a hearing or he don't have reception. You choose one. You think if I shake my head three times, it's going to work? All right, that's a good advice. <laughs> uh, that's okay, that's okay. All right. Anyway, guys, I think we have uh, no Muslims today. And, uh, oh, we have a Muslim actually. Hold on. Hello? Yeah, hello. Yes, my friend, how are you? I'm very fine. I'm actually calling from Nigeria. That's wonderful, my friend. How is Nigeria doing? Nigeria is very, very fine. Very fine. I heard that the Muslims are kidnapping girls and Boko Haram following the Prophet Allah of Allah's steps. Uh, well, if you're going to start like that, uh, I can still tell you that uh, Boko Haram does not represent Islam. Why they don't represent Islam? Those, do, do, yes, yes, those are those are religious extremists. We have them in almost all religions. Hmm. We have them in Christianity. Really? Yes. Where, where in Christianity yeah. we have Boko Haram? No, you don't understand what I mean. I, I never said Christianity has Boko Haram. What I'm saying is that. Boko Haram are religious extremists of Islam. Okay, what makes them As extremists for you? What making them extremists for you? Yes, it's because they, they they went they went to as in too far. I'm not going to say it now. They 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 were they, they were they were they were they. Hello. I lost him. Close your app, my friend, so we can hear you. Say again, please, if you are, if you hear me. Are you there? Hello. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's uh, this is network problem. It's all right. No problem. I understand, my friend. So uh -oh. a terrorist, a terrorist, he don't present Islam, correct? Yes. Okay. What wasn't your prophet a terrorist himself? No, okay, okay. Uh, say again, say again, uh -huh. I lost is, you. Say again, say again, please. I lost you. I said to um, you, isn't it Muhammad was a terrorist? What you said? Go ahead. I look like he have a bad internet. Are you there? Hello? Yes. Close, close, Hello? close all the apps. Yes, if yes, have, I am. If, you have, yes, if you have apps running, please close so you can have better internet. All right. Now, wasn't your prophet a terrorist himself? Now the question is: Did did Islam started from Prophet Muhammad? Wait, wait, okay, hold on. Why you are avoiding the answer? I mean, is your prophet himself was a terrorist? Yes or no? Or are you saying to me that your your prophet is not a Muslim? Or he was prophet, a bad Muslim. Prophet Muhammad was not a terrorist. Prophet Muhammad was not a terrorist. Well, I have a hadith in front of me. The hadith, the hadith in front of me, it says Muhammad saying, I've been victorious uh, by no, terrorism. No. Uh, okay. Okay, no, no, no. Let, 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 let me get this straight. Let me get this straight first. Let me get this straight. Hmm. Let me get this straight. Mm -hmm. I believe. No, no, no. Let's get this. Let's get this straight. I believe in the Quran as the as the word of God. Okay, so you don't believe in the hadith. Do you, you are you getting me? You don't believe no, in the hadith. No, I don't follow the hadith because okay. why? what if I show if you Muhammad, Muhammad? Okay, what if I show you Muhammad is a terrorist from the Quran? Is that fine with you? No, if you're going to quote verses for me from Quran, I'm 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 definitely aware. I don't hear you. What? Verse. Say again. Say, say again. Say again. I said to you. What if I show Hello? you? What I, show, I said to you. What if I show you from the Quran that Muhammad was a terrorist? What you say? What you are going to show me now? Eh? 
you are going to you are going to read a, a, a verse out of context for me no I, 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 can, I, 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 I will let you read for me i will let you read for me i will not read for you it doesn't matter you read no i know what you are going to read and i can, I can also read also a verse also for that quote that that said that you should not like uh, when you read surah 60 when you go to surah 60 my verse, friend uh, uh, no the, i want you states. i want you to read for me as much as you wish chapter, uh, chapter, three, chapter three chapter three chapter three Chapter 3, verse number 151, it says, We will cast terror in the heart of those no, who disbelieve. No. Hello, can you, hmm. can you read yeah, for okay. me? Can you give it to me, me in the for context? You. For you. Can you give it to me in the answer of this? Why Allah will cast terror? How he cast terror? Why Allah need terror? Yes. Why? Yes. Okay. 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 Should I, let, me, let me read Surah. Chapter 3, verse number 151. Hello? I hear you. Chapter 3. Hello? Verse... I hear you, my friend. Okay, I want to read Surah 16. Read for me this one first, and we go to any, any chapter you wish. No okay. problem. Okay, I want to read 60, verse 8. What, what chapter you want? Surah 60, verse 8. Are you hearing me? Are you chapter, hearing me? chapter 60, verse number 8, you said, right? Surah 60, verse 8. 16 or 60? Yes, yes, 16? Yes. 16 or 60? It, 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 it says, I love those not for 60, 60 verse number 8. Okay, read, read for us. Hello, read Hello? for us, read for us. Okay, hmm. read for us. Go ahead. Hello. Well, he is uh, using Nigerian uh, network, so I don't blame him. Are you there, my friend? He's gone. Let us try to call him back. All right, look like he is there. You see, the quote for your verses have nothing to do with our topic. Muhammad, he have Islam in stages. When Muhammad is weak, he cannot fulfill his attack and his killing. So he say, well, we will not uh, fight those who did not fight only those who uh, who kicked you out from your land, right? Okay. But this is what Muhammad did. At that stage, Muhammad was trying to send a message to the rest. I am not an enemy for you. I want to fight my people who they kick me out of my land. But the fact nobody kicked him out from his land. Muhammad the coward himself, he ran away because simply people don't like him no more. He got busted. When Muhammad, he got strong, then he attacked all the people. The Muslims they call for us or they quote for us abrogated verses in the Quran to fool us. Yes, my friend, go ahead. Okay, I, I was uh, reading from uh, Surah 60, verse 8. Okay. I was talking about tolerance, as in fighting not against people that 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 did not fight fight against you on account of your religion. Hmm. 
Uh, so but this must love us. But isn't it the Quran? To... But isn't it the Quran says anyone who refuses Allah Messenger and his religion is an enemy and he is in war with you? No, no, you're not getting it. See, in, in Islam, there is no compulsion religion. Surah chapter 2, verse 250 said, said it that there is no more compo uh, com uh, compulsion religion. My friend, that verse, Even the Muslims, that verse, 10, the Muslims yes. they quote for me is a stupid verse, have nothing to do with what you are saying. That verse Muhammad was saying that if you try to force your children not to convert to Islam, you have no right to do so. But you cannot, okay. this is not about the Muslims. You cannot force somebody to 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 uh, uh, to convert to Islam. It's the opposite. You cannot force you cannot force okay. someone not to convert to Islam. In Islam, let me ask okay. you: According to Islam, if a person he he leave Islam, what is the punishment? Punishment if he leave Islam. Hmm. I I I have I cannot I cannot say the way the Quran gave a punishment for for leaving the uh, uh, Islam. Hmm. But what may I know now from the Quran? I don't know if you're with me. Hello? I hear you. Go ahead. What uh, is the punishment? Now. What is uh, the punishment? You, My friend, what is the punishment? Like let us let us let us let us not to go around the bushes. What is the punishment now, I, for I leaving? Tell you about that what tolerance. is the now, punishment? Saying, My friend, what is the punishment? Is, you are saying that they, hmm. they force people to become to, to become a, a Muslim. My friend, what is the now, punishment is for Islam? leaving Islam? My friend, let us answer the question first. What is the punishment for leaving from the Islam? Quran, from the Quran. Give me anywhere according to you as a Muslim, what is the punishment? For the, 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 see, God, it's only God that decides that decides on who on who is going to believe or not, and the final judgment for the person. Because Quran was because Surah chapter 10, verse 99 said, I don't hear you. You see, he will not give an answer. How Hello? do you say to me? How do you say to me in Islam there's no terror? And is Islam what, there's no listen, listen, that's... listen, listen. I am asking you a very simple question. What is the penalty okay. according to Islam? You as a Muslim, according to your understanding, what is the penalty of leaving Islam? The punishment is in the hands of God. It is God who will decide what to do with the person. The punishment is the punishment of God? Because Yes, because it is not it's not a man. A man cannot decide any whosoever that is telling you that you have to maybe you flog the person or denounce the person or or uh, take away the properties of the person uh where the person is right. I not, I'm, not left, getting, uh, I'm not getting your answer. What is the punishment? What is the punishment? Those are laws what is men. the punishment? Okay, what is the punishment if I leave Islam according to Islam? According to the Quran, according to the Quran, it is God that will decide for whosoever leaves Islam. It's God who decides who will leave Islam. Yeah, as no, it's God who will decide the punishments for whosoever. Oh, where, 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 is, where is the verse that says Allah will decide the punishment? Can you show it to me? Okay, let, uh, let, let me let me let me let me read let me read a particular verse from ten uh, Surah ten verse ninety nine. It says, "And had your Lord willed, those on earth." Would have believed all of them together. So, will you then compel mankind until they become believers? Okay. It is not for any person to believe hmm. except by the leave of Allah. Okay, and let me show you from the Quran. The let me show you from the Quran that, that you are ignorant about your religion. The Quran says clearly that if you want them to stay, if you if the, the, the way for you to stay as a, as, a, as a life is to convert to Islam and to do the prayer. Read with me the Quran. Chapter 9, verse number 11. Do you see it? But if they repent and establish the worship and pay the zakat, the translation here is, is, is false, then don't kill them and they are your brothers in religion. So what is the condition not to kill them? If they convert and they... are you? Do you hear me? Hello? Abdul, are you there? Hello? Oh boy. Let us call him again. Hello? Hear me now. Okay. 
in chapter 9 verse number 11 it says that if you fight them and they do pay the zakat and they accomplish the prayer then don't kill them they are your brothers does it say that yeah okay yes so what does that mean that's mean if you are what, what is required for you to stay alive and the muslims will not kill you if you pay the zakat and if you establish the prayer and if you are doing what islam teach you to do then we will not kill you correct mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes. The you, verse you, you after it. Hold on. The verse. The verse means. after it. The verse after is saying, but if they violate their oath, what is the oath they are talking about? This is taking shahada. If they violate their oath after their covenant, what is the covenant no. for? Hold on. No, hold on. No, the no, no, no hold on. Yeah, it's explained. No. 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 Don't lie. Don't lie. It's in front of you. It says if they repent, establish no, regular. Who is the one? Who is the one is going to establish the prayer? Please. Please, Abdul, please, Abdul please, who please, is the one? No, explain please. to me. Who is the one required to establish Islamic prayer? You give me the answer, please. Not the oath. You're, you're saying the oath. If they go against the oath. My friend, my I'm friend, my friend, my friend, I'm asking you. You are the one who says to me, don't think, take things as out of context, right? Okay, the context in front of us, the verse number 11, verse number 12. Now, if they establish the prayer, if they repent and they establish the prayer and they do the zakat, there we go. <laughs> oh, we lost the connection. Again. Are you there? Hello. Okay, my friend. So yes, I am. If I am, they I am. if they pray, if they pray, we don't kill them. If they pray and Hello? pray, Zakat, I am. okay. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Hello. I hear you. Do you hear me? Hello. I hear you. Do you hear me? Oh boy. Are you there? Hello? I Hello? Hear you. The, the network is breaking. No problem. Hello? Do you hear me now? Hello? Hello? Do you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. I can okay. hear you now. As you see in verse number 11, it says that if they pray to Allah and establish the regular Surah, prayer. Surah. Sorry, sorry, Surah chapter what? Surah chapter what? Cha chapter 9, verse number 11. So if they establish the prayer and they practice the zakat, they pay the zakat and they practice the faith as Allah told, then don't kill them. They are your brothers in religion. But if they violate their oath, what is the violate of their oath? They okay. don't practice no more. They don't pray no more. They don't pay the zakat. Then we kill them. Okay, okay, okay. Look at look at look at the state the state of the same ch uh, uh, chapter you are reading from. Mm. Are you seeing the state scene? They said, "Will you not fight a people who have violated their oaths mm. and intended to expel the messenger?" Yeah, because they, they left do, Islam. Because they, they left Islam. Yeah, they, they left Islam. That's what I'm saying. They are Muslims. They are Muslims, and now they, they establish a, uh, what he's saying for you. Those who don't want to practice Islam, we kill them. Those if they no, start, it no, says in the front of no, you. Okay, why no, are you? No. Okay, hold on, hold on. So if if a person he is uh, uh, he's against Allah, and he practiced the salah, and he practiced the zakah, and he convert to Islam, you will not kill him, correct? Yes. Now do you know why? Okay. Do you know why? But then, you, but then it says you know, no. Listen, but then it says you know. listen, listen. What what is the verse after it saying? If they are became kufar, does it say the word kufar there? <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> oh boy. <clears throat> hmm? That's endless. Uh, like I think I'm wasting my time here. Take care, my friend. Take care. You see, and this is why they say I don't believe in the hadith that in order to avoid the stupidity, which is going to get them busted. So I don't believe in the hadith, and this is the only way they think they can get away with this, but you cannot. You cannot.
Who are you to say I believe in this and I don't believe in this? The penalty, all the Muslims around the world agree that the penalty of leaving Islam is death. The Quran used the word terrorism. Not only that, even you cut the fingertips of those who don't believe in Allah. Muhammad, he ordered to fight in chapter 9, verse number 29, the same chapter for this guy who is not able to call me and contact me. The same chapter, he says why he want to kill the Christian, not because they are fighting him. The Christian never fought Muhammad. Muhammad is the one who sent letters to the Christians, to the Roman at that time, and he forced those who they are Christians in the Arabian Peninsula, if they are exist, to convert to Islam. Fight those who do not believe in Allah. Not the one is fighting you. The one was fighting him according to Muslim books and even the Quran. It was the Mushrikeen. The Christian did not have a war with Muhammad. Never attack him. Never did any harm to him. Fight them and kill them unless they pay sub, they, they, they pay the jizya. So they lie to you and they say, we fight you only because you kicked us from 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 our land. Well, did the Ethiopian kick you out from the from your land? Did the Roman kick you out from your land? Until the end of the seven centuries, which mean more than a hundred year after Muhammad, not a single person speak Arabic in Jerusalem, not a single person speak Arabic in Damascus. Not a single person speak Arabic in Iraq because simply there's no Arab there. It is you who took their land. Muhammad, he sent the three letters to three kings saying convert or else. Muhammad, he established a covenant with the disbelievers and he said to them, we will have a peace agreement. In the same chapter, when Muhammad gets stronger, he said, declaration of immunity from Allah and his messenger to those pagan who you have contracted a mutual alliance so here we go we wash my hand from all the agreement I will not kill you unless you fight me declaration Muhammad now he became strong he signed a peace agreement until he is ready to kill them all and now he is ready to go in the same chapter it says verse number 191 Uh, actually in verse number chapter 2 not same chapter let us go this chapter is very long very funny disgusting at the same time so you will see here Muhammad saying the following okay here we go fight for the cause of Allah who fight with you or fight you but who is the one who fight you christian prince now is in war with allah kill him according to islam anyone who don't accept islam is in war with allah you see the muslim they try to fool you says fight those who fight you but what they will not tell you that the second you refuse islam you are in war with allah muhammad he said that the land is there's two three lands there's a land of islam which under the sharia law and there is a land of which is a land of peace and there's a land of war which is not under the sharia law as simple as that and then the land the, the land number three it is occupied by muslim but they don't practice sharia law they call it the land of fitna so anyone don't believe in islam he's your enemy this is why the quran in chapter 9 verse number uh, 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 20, 23 it says take not your fathers and your brothers as a friends now here in, in number 90, 190 and 91, it says, slay them wherever you catch them. 
and then it says but if they cease forgive them how we forgive them is that because Muhammad being nice no fight them until there is only one Islam you see here it says until the torment a, a, a tomlet or oppression there's not it doesn't say that it says fitna fitna is a chaos so it's not going to be chaos between us between the society and no uh, uh, no problem and then all the religion will became religion of Allah look at the translation doesn't say that change the translator you will see right away the translation change Let us see someone else. Or let us see. I don't know. All of them they are funny. Ahmed Raza Khan. Let us see. This is new. And fight them until there's no mischief remains. That's better translation. Mischief. What mischief meant? It's not to accept Islam. And only Allah is worshipped. So do you see what the mischief meant is? When they say to you, we fight only those who fight us. Fighting them is not to accept Allah. This is why this Abdul, he tried to run away from what Muhammad said, I've been ordered to fight and kill all mankind until they accept Islam. Why they trying to run away from it and say, Oh, I don't I believe only in the Quran, but the Quran is in total agreement with this. I have been commanded to fight against the people till till what? Till they stop fighting me? No. Till they, they became for peace? No. Actually, the Quran forbid the Muslims from crying out for peace, and I will show you the verse. So I have been commanded that I would fight against the people till they declare that there's no God but Allah. So what is the condition to, to cease fire is to declare there's no God but Allah. And what else? And when they profess that there's no God but Allah, their blood and their money is granted by security. So Muhammad is saying clearly, if you don't convert to Islam, I will kill you, I will take your money. Muhammad in different hadith, he make it more clear that even if you don't pray, if you don't do zakat, if you don't do salat, if you don't even eat as we eat, if you don't pray in the direction of we pray, still he will kill you, even if you say shahada. I have been ordered to kill, not to fight, by the way. Here the word qatala means fight to kill. The people, till they say, none the right have to worship say, but Allah. And if they say so, pray like our prayer, face our qibla, slaughter as we slaughter, then and only then, their blood and their property is secured from our hands. Muhammad is a thief. So if you want your blood and your property to be secured from Muhammad from taking it and killing you, Arabian your wife, convert to Islam and pray as he pray and he slaughter as he slaughter and that's it. Muslim, they quote for your verses which is not valid no more. As an example, can a Muslim cry for peace? Absolutely not. A Muslim only can sign a peace agreement only if he is weak, the same as Muhammad did in chapter 9. Be wary and faint hurt, uh, hurted crying for peace when you should be the uppermost what does that mean israel today is uppermost not the muslims so it's okay to sign peace agreement with israel but this is not a peace agreement this is temporarily until we are the uppermost and then we attack back this is what muhammad did so the muslim what they try to do they quote to you for your verses which is abrogated not to be followed where muhammad as a war monger he used as a stages to accomplish his kingdom. So when he was weak, he have no problem to sign peace agreement. Fight not those who don't fight you. Because he don't want to tell the people, I'm not going to fight all of you. And then he said, fight all mankind. And they say, no, there's no God but Allah. 
So the agenda of Muhammad come in stages, and all the Muslims agree in that. In the beginning, Muhammad actually was not violence because he was weak. He cannot be violent. They will kill him in two seconds. But Muhammad, after he got the warrior, as saaliq as saaliq simply are the outlaw. You see, if you go in the hadith, we search for word saaliq You can search for the word saaliq in Wikipedia. Saaliq simply is the outlaw. People who commit murder in order their tribes to avoid the penalty, uh, which means because Arab they seek revenge. If you kill one of our tribe, we will not let it go until you give us the guy or we will kill someone from you. So if somebody is a murderer or a rapist, like this, see from your tribe, somebody here rapes somebody from my tribe. So what we do now? You have to give me that guy so we can kill him. If you don't do that, then we will kidnap a woman from yours and we will rape her. This is what they do. So in order to avoid such a thing, they kick out their son who commit that a crime, who is a murderer or a rapist. And they, they announce that this person has nothing to do with our tribe no more and his blood is for free. You want to get him? Go get him. We wash our hands. So you have no revenge with us. Those are the ones who, who join Islam with Muhammad, a bunch of criminals. And look what it says in Arabic, and I changed any Muslim to say I am lying. Abshiru ya ma'ashara sa'alik al-muhajirin. Sa'alik al-muhajirin. Sa'alik is the criminals. Muhammad, he have nothing but the criminals who follow him. And Muhammad, he sent a letter to the Sa'alik saying to them, for now you fight for no reason except money. But if you join me, you fight for Allah and money. Because you will get your reward. What is the reward? The same. But now you became a hero because you are fighting for God. So you are a criminal? Join me. And look how the Muslim translate the Sa'alik, they translate as the poor immigrants. <laughs> they are not poor and they are not immigrant. There's a very well-known war. It's called the War of Apostate. The War of Apostate, and I changed the Muslim to say to me that Abu Bakr was an idiot and he is not a good Muslim too. When Muhammad, he passed away, or killed by poison, as the Hadith says, Many people stop paying zakat and stop praying to Allah and they don't want to be Muslims because simply they've been forced to convert to Islam. And then right away the gang, the Sa'alik of Muhammad, the one who they are making a living just from killing, they decide to go in war to force again people paying money. And a Muslim like this guy from Nigeria who do not know how to read two Arabic words together, he's trying to say to us, oh no, no, Islam does not teach that. Muhammad he raped, Muhammad he kidnapped, Muhammad, he stole even children's. Muhammad, he killed little children. Imagine the Muslim, they say to us that we don't kill children. That's a big fat lie. This is a Jew. He been forced into Islam. Speaking about what happened to him, he is from Bani Quraiza. I was among the captives of Bani Quraiza. They, the companions, examine us and those who had begun 
to grow here in their pubic area were killed as mean you are just nine years old you know I, I told you Middle Eastern we are hairy since early is you have a hair on your body so if you are nine or eight years old and you have some hair there they kill you do you see it And this is terrorism okay now they are not fighting you you see that they see the lie they say to us that oh, we fight only those who fight us okay now those are your prisoners even the Quran says that take no prisoner kill them all take no prisoners Look at this. It is not fitting for the prophet that he should have a prisoners of war. So what do you do with them? He killed them. <laughs> Is that terror or not? Is that Quran or this is a weak Quran? What do you mean kill the prisoners? Why you want to kill them? They surrender their arms. The same what happened to the Jews, the stupid Jews. They put their arms down. They thought he is going to be a man of just. He's claiming to be a prophet of God. Okay, we will not fight you. He slaughtered more than 900 men after this put down their arms. Stupid. At least if you fight, you will kill from the, from the your enemy as much as you can before they kill you. This is why if you fight an Islamic army, never surrender. You saw what ISIS is doing. They burn them alive. They split them pieces. They torture them. They crucify them. They cut their hands. Why you want to torture yourself? Fight until you die with honor. Don't surrender like a goat with no honor. As you see, it's not fitting for a prophet to take prisoners. So what we do them? Kill them. That is not a hadith. And this is again about apostasy, but we did not go there because this guy he he hang up. We did not reach that point. You see, when you want to get a Muslim busted, you have to go step by step, right? But anyway, if you go to chapter 18, verse number 74, you will see that the child who because he will leave Islam, the Prophet Al Khadr Allah order him to kill the person. But he's a boy. This is apostasy. Then they proceed until they met with the young man. He slew him. Moses said. By the way, this is this is a lie. It doesn't say young man. What young man? It's a boy. Change the translator. The translation will change. You see, we have to change translation like, you know, we jump like monkeys from branch to branch because not even one Muslim is honest. Here we go. Here became boy. There became a man. There's a huge difference between a boy and a young man. Huge difference. So they went until when they meet a boy and they slew him. Musa said to Al-Khadr, which Allah, he, Allah, he sent Musa to learn from Al-Khadr. And he said to him, why you did such a thing? This is evil. This guy is, is an innocent boy. This is a modest slaughter. Why you did that? Al-Khadr, who is a higher prophet from Allah, he said to him, to Musa, you do not understand. I told you, you will not have patience with me. 
then they continue and then after the the, the prophet al khadr he decided to explain to the full musas what's happening about the boy i said as as of the for the boy his parents were believers and we feared that he should make a disobedience and he become in disbelief you will notice here the word kufr is taken off it says what kufron he will become a kafir change the translation again we have to change the translation every every what you can do let us go let us see this guy Maududi. Doody doody. As for the boy, his parents were people of faith, and we feared that lest he should plague them with transgression and disbelief. <laughs> and here the funny, the, the boy did not even leave Islam yet, yet he been slaughtered. And he's a boy. Now we can show tons of reference. And since when you want to kill a child because you fear that one day he will leave Islam? What about you? You wait until he leaves Islam. And they say to me that apostasy is not in the Quran. We can show you there's tons of verses. We are not done. But this guy, he cannot call me and, you know, funny Muslims. But I'm sure he is listening. He's watching. Do we have any Muslim here? Yeah, Abdul. All right, guys, I think we are done for today. I am, uh, uh, you see, we have a lot of people watching and joining our videos. Like right now, we have 700, we were like, uh, sometime we have a thousand, more than a thousand, thousand two hundred. If every one of you do a like, like by a few hours from now, we have a couple of thousands. If every one of you give a like and give a share, the video, imagine if everyone, Look, okay, the, has, the, the, the one we have yesterday is ten, more than 10,000 already. Okay, if from the 10,000, only 1,000 people, they share. If only 1,000, they share. You can imagine how many we can have as a review. But the problem, we as a Christians, we just watch. Okay, this guy, he is doing his job. We support you. Good for you. Thank you, CP. We are glad to have you. But then we do nothing. Does it hurt to copy a link and share it in Facebook to share it somewhere? Does it cost you money? Is it hard? Does it cost you time? If a Muslim make a video, stupid video, you will see how the Muslim they will give him a hundred thousand view, like in, in in less than a month. Our videos stay for weeks, and then we have what, uh, 15,000, 20,000, 30,000? Because Muslim, they sponsor their cult. Christians, they like to watch only the fight with the cult of Islam. So each time, please, when you see our videos, not only my videos, anyone who is fighting this cult, Make it as a habit. Do something. Be part of the fight and cost you no money. You don't use your voice. You don't spend your time. Your eyes hurt. Like, no, my eyes really are burning. Yesterday I finished my eyes. was hurting me for an hour. They are dry. 
uh, they are hurting. I cannot even look at the TV. Uh, you, you'll just copy the link and share it. What you will lose. And by doing that, maybe you can change the life of somebody, get the blessing of the Lord. Bring somebody out of the cult of Islam, show the truth. So let us work together and not to be lazy. The Lord, he said, from their fruits, you shall know them, not from their names. So if you have a Christian name, like your name is a Christian prince, it doesn't make you Christian. What make you Christian is your fruits. And one day, the Lord will ask you for your fruits, what you did. You saved yourself only? You did not bring anyone with you? By posting a link somewhere, you might change the life of somebody who was going to convert to Islam or somebody who is a Muslim, he decided to leave Islam. As you see, in the last 10 days, how many Muslims left Islam life on air? Just in the last 10 days. So by just posting the link, you can do the same. People, they can see, they can hear, they can learn. And you can change the life of somebody. So I want to say thank you for being here. May the Lord bless you. And then we'll see you soon again. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And there is no name better than his name. That is the Messiah, the only Savior. A child molester, a pimp, God, a heaven of sex. This is cannot be God. That is from the devil. You do not, you do not need to be a genius to know that this is heavenly of devilish God. Sex, penises, vagina, addiction to sex, addiction to drugs. Even he promised you you will have sex with your mother as the Muslims agree and your children and your niece and your daughter. How evil a human being can go far with his addiction to temptation. When you join Islam, you lose your morality. And that's what the Muslims agree about. Go and watch my previous video where the Muslims agree, all of them with no exception, that in heaven of Allah, there is no morality. Zero morality. That is not from God. Thank you for watching. And may the Lord bless you. And see you soon again. Bye-bye.